How's it going guys? My name is Andreas and today I'm going to be talking about PLO Advanced Strategy and in particular about the early position raise in a 6 max PLO game. Now the first thing you want to think about is that poker at its core is going to be about capturing as much as possible of the blinds. Imagine everyone would be folding to you that it would be the dream scenario and you would actually be winning at 150 big blinds per hundred. So if you play in a game of 50 cents one dollar you know every time you're stealing the blinds you win 150 and if you play 100 hands that's 150 dollars that would be amazing right but it's not going to be possible from the early position under the gun you're not going to win as much from the blinds why because you know the middle position could three bet you the cutoff and the button they're all in position to you and also when they flat call it's not a dream scenario for you at all so you're gonna play out of position for the rest of the hands. It's difficult to capture a lot of the blinds. And also the blinds still could defend and you know try to defend some of their pot share um, after the flop, especially on low boards, for example, where you don't have good board coverage. So these are the reasons why it's not easy to get as much as possible of the blinds. A second thing you wanna think about is rake. In lower stakes in Pot Number Roma, there will be 5% rake and it's not going to be really capped because you're not going to get to the cap um, that soon. If you play a little bit higher, then it's getting better with rake structure, but your opponents get better. And that's my third point. Um, another point, how to determine which hands to play on the gun is your opponents. Um, who are they? How much are they playing? Um, how much are they three betting? That's the, almost the biggest thing because when you get three bet and you don't have aces or a very strong hand that you can defend with, you're actually gonna lose money because they are gonna have a lot of aces in their range and it's gonna be not so easy to play post flop with a lot of your marginal holdings that you're opening. And then the fourth factor is going to be your skill. If you're just new to PLO, you might wanna stick to, you know, just good hands that actually have a high EV and how you're going to determine which hands to play exactly I'm going to show you guys now in a second. This is Monker Solver here. This is a solution that I um, have from Chain Anders. You've probably seen it before if you follow him. Um, this is basically the 17% under the gun. Um, range that is here that is GTO in a high stakes and in a high stakes environment where rake is pretty low and your opponents are very good. Um, so this is what you should be raising, and you can see that the EV is listed here. What does this nine thousand mean? Well, it means that you would be winning with this on average. Um, this is two thousand to two, and this is one thousand, so you would be winning four and a half blinds with ace ace jack jack double suited, right? However. They're not going to be that many hands that capture so much of the blinds. Most hands, in fact, they capture uh, much less than the 3,000 here. So let's have a look at some of the hands that are marginal. Well, if you type in ace, jack, ten, deuce, you can also type in the suits. You can see that I picked this hand because it actually only captures 155 here. That means it's not going to be super profitable from under the gun. Even though the check, check ten combination is very good, ace, check, ten. As an ace blocker, the check 10 in general makes the most straights in no limit hold on and pot limit Omaha, but the do stangler hurts the hand quite a lot. And you can see when you get three bet, it's not gonna be an amazing situation here. So it on average, in all scenarios, if everyone played GTO would capture 155, um, um, that's a fraction of the blinds. So it's less than 10% of a big blind. Now, if you are not playing correctly, if your skill, that's a third, uh, that's a fourth point is not on point, if you're making mistakes, this can very quickly become minus 300. Like, let's have a look at, um, you know, some hands that get folded. You can see here, um, they will be too marginal. Uh, let's make the hand a little bit weaker. Let's make it ace check, nine deuce. And you can see that they all get folded at this point once, even when they're double suited, actually. So, this is basically one of the things you can look at if you want to improve on your under the gun range. You can look at, okay, what are the 70% of hands that are in this solution? Which hands I want to cut because of my A, um, lack of skill, B, too high rake, etc. You got to have those factors back in here 
You gotta weigh them in in your decision-making process. And this is exactly what I do also with my students. I help them trying to figure out um, in their databases what they still want to improve on, um, where I can find those leaks with filters that I'm using in Holder Manager 2. That's why I also noted it back here. If you want to determine your skill, don't just have a guess. Make it really empirical and that means look into a database of yours or have someone else look into the database if you need help with it and then you can determine your skill and then shift your ranges according to it and you're going to have much more success in this um, area of poker okay so if you like this video hope you hit the thumbs up down here and subscribe to this channel let me know also in the comment section what you know i could do in the future in pillar i can obviously not release everything because some of the one-on-one -on -one coaching is still going to be even more advanced than what I'm producing on con uh, content here on YouTube. And I'm gonna reserve it for that. But I hope you guys still could take a lot from it in this video and see you for the next one.